Yeah, Wendy, back in school. She could turn all the guys' heads. All those girls in that track, with the exception of one, <laughs> could turn all the guys' heads. So obviously that's where all the guys hung out. One other cool thing up here is, uh, you guys may rem remember this woman they called Aquaman, Aquamom, Aquaman. Uh, she had eight babies, Nadia Sulman, I think. In a way, her face was kind of good looking. You could tell the plaque surgery. Anyway, she lived on this street. She lived in the house right in front of that white, that white car. I used to see the grocery store all the time. Right there. That was Octomom's house. And now, this is Sierra Vista School. I have not been out on this ground for more than 30 years. Maybe 40. Maybe 40 years, no, 30 years. Heck, yeah, we came back in high school, I think. We used to launch rockets in the back. So, maybe 30 years. But look, service to school. Picture day, September. Picture day, I remember picture day. That's a picture right in there. But they used to set up a carnival right here. Had booths to raise money for the school. The parents did. And then these bikes with like egg-shaped wheels. I used to love riding those things. But, uh... The maintenance guy, Jenner, is cleaning up. I'm gonna see if he had mine if I walk through the back. There used to be bike racks up the front. We used to park our bike there. I used to ride my bike to this school. Fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. I don't know any fourth grade, fifth or sixth grade that rides their bike that far from school anymore. But uh I used to go up this down that street really fast coming downhill to go home. And there's a shortcut in the back. See how long the school's been here. Nineteen fifty-eight. Service to school, the Harbor School District, Orange County, Board of Trustees, District Superintendent. It's been here a long time. But then so have I. So let's see. I had one class over there and they're connected with the other building. That was Miss McCat and Miss Martini. They were cool. Never had anything over here. Oh, Miss McCat was over here. No, Miss McCat and Martini were in the front, I believe. I believe. Mr. Lutz was my favorite teacher in the fourth grade. Back here. Later, Mr. Lutz, I went to school with his son, David. And I. Thank you, Miss Harris was right there. I think that was her name. Wow, these names have not come to my mind for many years. This is, it's, it's kind of exciting coming back, checking this out. I know most of you, this is probably boring stuff, but to some of you that have seen this place back when you were a kid, you're gonna be like, whoa, I remember that. <laughs> So Mr. Lutz taught us a trick. Out here, there were gophers all over. And we'd catch these gophers by putting some kite string down and go making a loop, like you're tying your shoe. Come over here, and one guy over there, one guy over there. He'd pop out, we'd pull them tight. We'd attach balloons, and we'd uh, airlift the uh, gopher relocation. Play handball down there, war ball. Nick Morales. He was a child actor. He, uh, Corey, Corey, what was his last name? Corey Nelson, I think, was the strongest kid at this entire school. Corey Nelson could throw that red rubber ball at you so hard, you try to catch it and bounce off your chest before you had time to close your arms. It was hard to catch. Very rare you could catch it when you did it hurt. Nick Morales got pegged in the arm and broke his arm like a Looney Tune. Like, see my shadow out there? It went like this. It's like a Looney Tune. Nick Morales, he was on Beretta. He was a child actor. I think I already said that. 
John West. John West was my closest friend at this school. Computer football came out here. Laird, a guy named Laird, I forget his last name. Bill Elmquist. Oh shoot, I haven't thought of him in a long time. Bill Elmquist, Mr. Let's Class. We used to come running out here at lunchtime or, and go into the bathroom and we'd play computer football. I can still do computer football and, and all the way through, um, just I just know the patterns. But uh, back here in the bushes, John West found some, well, he said tetherball here, it's gone. It's completely different. We found some bottles back here and he was in the Doctor Who, the show, and he picked it, the bottle up with his pencil and he carried it up to the office and he says, we can take this and have this dusted for fingerprints and we can catch the culprits that are drinking on school grounds. And the lady, just like on that old cartoon where that kid daydreams and he slices the shark and he gets the arrows in him and says, I shall return. And he's like daydreaming all the time and the teacher says, Ralph, Ralph, Ralph. And he wakes up and the teacher's like, uh, yeah. That's exactly what that lady in the office did. Uh, yeah. So I I associate that lady in the office <laughs> with that cartoon. Everything's connected. <laughs> Here I am walking around at night drinking some coffee and walking on the school grounds. Oh, yeah, but this wasn't here either. Look at that drawing. Look at that drawing. That's great. Or Aurelia, Aurelia. Beer, Biracos. Dude, Aurelia. I went to school with you. <laughs> How's it going, Carl? How's it going, <laughs> Carl. Turn off, turn off that camera. Remember this school? Huh? You remember this school? Remember this school? Yeah, you went to this school, didn't yes. you? Yes. Dude, I was walking around with memories. Miss McCatton, Miss Martini, yeah. Mr. Lutz, who else do you remember? McCatton, just going yeah. back, I'm showing sure remember the harbor and showing the different places that I went to. There's a lot of people that subscribe to me yeah. used to live out this way. Yeah, it's funny, man. I already went by the Deer Palm. I showed where Valencia used to be. I, I'm gonna go show where Terra Rica used Terra to be. Okay. I'm gonna show Washington. I already showed Sonora. At Sonora, I went over the fence, I went down the tunnels, and I followed those tunnels like we used to. Uh, okay. Different from our day. Yeah, this wasn't even here, I don't think. Yeah, see, those, see those things up there on the poles? That used to be part of the, the roof. The roof would come off, and they, we had wooden benches that went straight through. Yeah, yeah. And, like Almost and, like Washington Junior Highs used to be. Yeah, Remember that? And, and then the rest of it was like grass area. This building didn't even exist. And you said they have 700-something kids here? Yeah. And it goes pre-kindergarten. It used to be only fourth, fifth, and sixth. Right. Well, back in, the, okay, back in the 50s and 60s, it was kindergarten through sixth grade. Around, around 1970, it went to, like, Ladera Palma was kindergarten through third. This was fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then in the late 80s, after we got out of Washington. Washington it, was eight. Washington. It, seventh it, and eighth. It would switch to kindergarten through second grade. This was third, fourth, and fifth. Then you went to sixth grade over there. Now we're pre-K to sixth grade, and then you go to back to seventh and eighth. And so Washington's only seventh and eighth again, right? Um, I never knew why they took Terrique out, but I just came from there. Yeah, Terrique. I mean, I mean, uh, Valencia. Okay. That was kindergarten, first, second, third. This was fourth, fifth, and sixth. And what? And, and uh, what? What did? What? What did? Uh, Ladera Palma used to be. That was it was kindergarten through third. Kindergarten through third. Kinder, first, second, and third. For some we, reason I, we I started four, out there. That we were fourth, fifth, and six here. For some reason I started out there. And then we had they went to Valencia. And then we went to uh, Washington and had Burley. Yeah, Burley. Co Coach Burley. And funny thing about Burley is uh, years later, years years and years after graduation in the nineties, I'm there on a Friday night, Thursday night, Friday night, dancing. In the dance floor? Yeah. And I met this Mexican girl and this German girl, Anya Rodger, and I forget the Mexican girl's name. Oh, I'll think of it in a while. But um, I give her a ride home, and uh, 
I take her up the Harbor Heights, yeah. and we turn on this first street right there before the church where the, the new okay. Korean church is. We go down the end of the street, and I'm in the in the in the house, and this guy comes up to me and goes, "Yabara, is that you?" And I turn around. He goes, "What are you doing in my house?" It was Burley, dude. That was his maid. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you're not dating her, are you? She takes care of my kids. Don't mess around with her. <laughs> Small world, huh? Yeah. This is a uh, service to school. And Carl. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that was Carl. Carl. He went to high school with me. He was one grade below me, but he lived on my girlfriend at the time street, which is a street over here called Marcine. And uh, that's how I knew him. And we caught we caught up on a bunch of stuff. I talked, sat and talked to him for about an hour. Some of the other places I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna show you in the daytime. The tunnel, I figure I can show you that at nighttime, so. I'll be back. So I'm back in the city that I grew up in to show a few things. I did a video earlier, there'll be a link in the details. People really liked it and put a lot of input and people that used to live here saw it and they added things and they told me things I didn't know and I thought it was really cool. It's like a combination of our knowledge on the subject. But the thing that I'm gonna tell you that we found most incredible, like what happened right over here, what was right over here, when my mom told me this, I didn't believe her. I thought she was pulling my leg. But I asked the lady at the post office and the lady at the post office, this is the post office, by the way. This is the main post office on Imperial and Idaho Street on the northeast corner. Um, she told me, yeah, she heard about it too when she was a kid and she didn't believe it. But we found pictures on the internet it did exist. So, the stuff I'm gonna tell you, if you don't believe it, you think, ah, hogwash. You can look for yourself on the internet. One of the things I'm gonna tell you that really incredible, I learned, oh, about 35, 40 minutes uh, southeast of here at a place called San Juan Capistrano. Go there, pay for the tour. The tour is worth it. The information you hear when you're sitting in that little movie house is beyond unimaginable about what, what happened in this area. But I'm going to show you the places that happened, tell you the stories. I don't know all of the dates, I don't know all the names, I don't know all the details, but like I said, you can look it up. So, uh, those of you who are interested in my last one called, um, and then one time on the train tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of band camp, um, I think you'll like this one. Here comes somebody. Something else happened recently. Uh, back here, east, northeast here, a little bit where you can even look on Google Earth, and you can verify what I'm telling you. This real. This is this is real. This is not fiction. This really happened. This city. Well, all cities hold secrets and lost information, but this one holds so much. And I know it, and it's really cool. Before this post office was here, set back off the road a little bit, before that man-made hill was made. Man-made hill, keep that in mind. Before that man-made hill right there was made, where those house set up top of it, there lay a natural body of water. I've showed you guys that creek that starts out way down there in Brea, runs up from La Harbor Heights, I mean, above, east of La Harbor Heights by the, by the Deer Palma, comes down, hits Central or State College or La Harbor Boulevard, 
or Leffingwell, which are all the same street. Runs along there, turns down Palm, goes under my high school, in front of my high school, and then breaks out where, I, where I'm showing you on this video. Well, that used to come over here and empty and open up out here. Then they put it underground. When they put it underground, they built that house, that, that, that mound to put house on. But before that, get this, Monkey Island. It sounds like something off of Pinocchio, but Monkey Island existed in a natural body of water. How the monkeys get there, you ask me, how they don't get away? Well, when my grandpa remarried, he divorced, I guess, and he remarried, and he remarried his stepwife, which was my, his, his wife, which was my mom's stepmother, I believe is how the story goes. They went to Sears and Roebuck. Sears used to sell pets. Sears used to sell monkeys. And my mom said way back in the 50s or 60s, a monkey went for nearly $100, which was entirely a lot of, which was a lot of money back then. So she wanted a monkey, so my grandpa bought her the monkey. My grandpa worked at General Motors. I believe he was a machinist. He made good money, so he bought a monkey, her monkey. Had a little collar on it and a leash. They got in the car, drove all the way home, which was not far from here. That monkey sat on her shoulder and sat on her lap real calm the whole time. She thought it was trained. She didn't hold on to that leash. When she opened that door, boom, the monkey took off into the trees and gone. $100 down, your, down the tubes, plus the cage and food and whatever else, but gone. Watch the little rascals. Do you see how they had these monkeys? They used to be household pets. Well, my mom's stepmother had one. Got away. A lot of other people had them. They got, either got away or they bring them to this island and they drop them off. And people would go there and park their cars. And there'll be a picture of what the area looked like in this video towards the end. But and throw them fruits and vegetables or whatever, and the monkeys just stayed there. That was their, that's where they lived. Anyway, when they wanted to build all this, they filled in that lake with dirt, that dirt, and they put the creek under, underground, and they built that massive mound on it and put those houses. Well, all of that weight over the years, pushing, 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 on the, on the uh, news about Seven, eight years ago, there was a massive quake that ran right through here and dusted a bunch of houses up there on the hill. Dusted a bunch of them. Totaled them. Um, they couldn't live in them. But that earthquake shook this whole city here big time. And when it did that, it did some structural damage to the uh, tunnel. Since then, there's a sinkhole up there where Monkey Island used to be. Boom, dropped. You can see it from, from uh, Google Earth. And they don't know how they're going to fix it. Well, that tunnel underground comes down here, opens up, just like I told you, and pops up in back of Regal Cinema, which is right there, those red lights. That is Regal Cinema. I will be going there to see a movie tomorrow night, I believe. Or no, I'm going backpacking. I'll see you Sunday or Monday. But there used to be an arcade right there. Great arcade, everybody, all my high school buddies used to hang out there. Monkey Island. How many of you guys have city, live in a city that had Monkey Island? Monkey Island! <laughs> it's amazing. I'll show you a few other cool things. Monkey Island. It blows me away. This is one of two uh, post offices. This is the main post office. There's a sub post office over there by, it used to be next door to the police station. Since then they bought that land out. And they booted out the post office and they moved the post office over to where there used to be a Wells Fargo bank. The whole city's changed for those who lived here as early as the 90s back. It's, it, the whole city's changed and it's changing every day. Okay, I'm directly across the Imperial from the post office and a little bit east. In front of Target. Well, this Target, this entire lot all the way down to Idaho. Idaho to Imperial, all the way up to the houses. This was one big lot. There was a snack bar back here, because you know it makes sense. The screen was here. 
Hold on. The screen was here. This was the La Harbor Drive-In. And, uh, it was angled. I'll put a, a picture right after this clip. It was angled so you're parking back here. They had the poles with the box put in your windows. And snack bar back there, like I said, you get pizza and hamburgers and hot dogs and popcorn and such. But this was the screen, huge screen. And uh, I remember seeing a movie, I remember it, I remember it. A movie called Simba, it was not Simba. Uh, yeah, maybe it was Simba. No, a movie called Maybe. Frasier. It was about a lion. It was the life of a lion from when he was born to, I believe, until he died. I was a little kid. It made me cry when he died. But uh, an ancient alien theorist was born here, myself. So when Sukulis and all those guys were just running around playing with their yo-yos, I was already theorizing about aliens. I was right here with, uh, with the the writer of Chariot to the Gods himself. Uh, he made me a believer then. Chariot to the Gods was a long movie back then. They didn't have movies that long back then, but it was a long movie. My mom and dad wanted to go. I was like, man, this is incredible. And I was a little kid, but I was like, wow. And so, after becoming an ancient alien theorist here, one of the first and original, so when they were out playing, I was in the trenches. I was one of the founders. I was down in the trenches. In those trenches, I was playing G.I. Joe's and Hot Wheels, but I was in those trenches. <laughs> so, uh, there's a place still in existence here, still in business on Stearns and Harbor. At least it was a few months ago when I was down this way. Stearns and Harbor by, uh, by the Chinese place in the Winchells called the in bin you can get any shirt made I picked the little decal and they'd iron it on and I got looked to the skies and and uh, it had a UFO look to the skies and I wore that look to the skies against my mom's better wishes to my school photograph <laughs> the teachers all don't you want to wear a nice shirt nice collar shirt and a vest I'm like just take the picture lady one of the first ancient alien theorists, myself, right here. So this was La Harbor Drive. -in. And when one day uh, a Pollo Loco opened up there on Whittier and Idaho, Whittier and Idaho, and I met a girl named Nancy right after graduation, and she wanted to go out. So I said, "All right, let's go to, to uh, Nuts Bray Farm." She had never been. Went to Nuts Berry Farm, found out that week or week prior, they changed their hours from what they had all my life to uh, weekdays. They now close at six. So we get down there, they're closed. And then, um, well, let's go to the drive-in. So we come to the drive-in and I go to come in and there's a sign closed. Well, they never opened again. They tore it down and this is what they made. So, strike one, strike two, there was no strike three. I took her home, dropped her off. We never actually went out. Wasn't meant to be. So right now we're back of Regal Cinemas. Oh, the second door right here, I had a, a Domino's Pizza delivered. <laughs> when the movie was going, I paid the guy extra. He just uh, texted me when I was there and I opened the door just to blow my friends away. Uh, there's a ditch down there. That ditch is the same ditch by Sonora. It builds up water down over here. And uh, we tried stocking it with catfish. They didn't last. But this lot here, this used to be Fashion Square. And this is La Harbor Walk-In. And there is a gap in between La Harbor Walk-In and Fashion Square. Fashion Square was an outdoors mall. One of the last ones around. This one in Whitwood. But this one was really cool. And uh, when I was a kid, not only was it a mall, 
at certain times of the year, um, Circus Vargas used to come here, set up their tent out there, a couple of big tops, had their elephants and tigers and bears, and they had a balloon right in this area, a hunter balloon. They had a stake down, and they'd get in, they'd let you go up 200 feet, it's 15 bucks, you go up 200 feet for a few minutes and you come back down. They did that all day. They had this, and there's buffums, there was a bullocks, there was another arcade here. There was a, what was that Levi place? Um, oh shoot, everybody went there in the 80s to get their jeans. Well, there was one of those. There are a bunch of stores, but this was a mall that ran east and west and uh, they tore it down and made this. I miss that mall. And coincidence, I'm down here making this movie tonight because last night and tonight, Jaws, the Jaws series is playing. So uh, when Jaws came out, the ticket booth was where that palm tree is. It was a little round thing. You buy your ticket and you get in line over here. Well, that line for Jaws went all the way down around the building, around the building and came out here. For Star Wars, it went down around the building, up this way, it was incredible. Down. You had to buy your ticket four or five showings in advance. At one point, when Star Wars uh, became known, uh, the first one, which was part four, later on, you had to buy them a couple days in advance. There was no online. There was none of this. It was first come, first serve. Second place was the first loser. It was reality. Everybody didn't win. Those who stro strived to win won. Those who sl were slackers ended up by the wayside. And nobody whined and moaned and groaned and bitched about it. That was just reality. And that's the way life is. The way they're doing it now is screwing things up. They're making them weak. My brother's a teacher, and the new law is if a kid acts out in school, you can't say anything to you. You can't say go to the office. You have to sit there and teach. and. So he's teaching, trying to talk over them, trying to ignore them. It is just ridiculous. They need to go back, but there's no going back. Okay, now I shot across town over to a Costco on Beach Boulevard and Harmon Boulevard. In back of this divide right here, there used to be a Sackett and Peters right here. I was just reading about it, the history of Sackett and Peters. It's online, all of it's online. But um, in back of the second Peters, there used to be a creek. That creek's underground now, I believe, but that creek went across and caught another creek that rode all the way down. But used to catch frogs back there. We'd catch frogs, tadpoles, and take them over to the lagoon and fish with them. We knew this town like the back of our hands, me, Wayne, and Doug, and uh, a few other people, but mostly me, Wayne, and Doug, three amigos. But in this thing, a second Peters, okay, there was a haircut place. There was a bagel place. There was a H salt fish and chips. He was the last person to, the, to leave this chain. Over here, there was a thrifties. There was a doll house place where they made these custom doll house. And there was the holy grail of toy stores, not Toys R Us. They blow. This was Toy City. There was one here, and there was one next to Love's Barbecue over there on Brea Boulevard and Central on the southeast corner. There was Toys R Us, Toy, Toy City. Toy City, I can still picture it, two doors. The exit and the entrance, you go in there and you go in past the register and they had a round carousel, a plexiglass carousel where you can look at the Hot Wheels. These were Corgi toys. These were high dollar Hot Wheels, beautifully handcrafted, a great made. Toys. I, I still have my battleship. I still have my Batmobile. I traded my uh, Bat boat and I lost my helicopter. If I still had that set, it'd be worth about two thousand dollars. But the Batmobile, the blade pokes down. Poof, the missile shot out of the back. I mean, it, it's excellent. I have Batman. I don't have Robin. Lost him. Um, but they had the Corgi toys. They had the 
TCR Total Control Racing off to the left, and they had the the uh, what do they call it? Fender Ball and all the Red River Balls and Baseballs and everything on the last row, along with the Foam Toys Nerf had just come out. The first Nerf balls, Nerf footballs. There were no Nerf guns or anything. Nerf footballs. Um, I can still check a Nerf from here to that Pepsi machine. Everybody asked me growing up, how do you throw them so far? The trick is just gr you grab them really, really, really tight. You pull it out. It's, it's a skill to it. But uh, then the G.I. Joe rack. G.I. Joe rack. That was the rack. I had the headquarters. I had the, the Lost Mummy. Search for the Last Lost uh, Curse of the Mummy. I had, oh, the boat. The, the ray. I had... Uh, a bunch of them. What I didn't have, my brother had. We had that. We had Action Jacksons. He had the Steve Austin with the Bigfoot. He still has the Bigfoot piece of the Steve Austin. Um, and like I said, H Salt and an electronic store. There was a, a barber type store. There was a barber back there. My dad used to take us to. There was a, a place that made egg rolls back there for a while. Um, there was a lot of stores here. This was a big place. Really cool place. You try ice cream there. And uh, they took it all away and they made this. Oh, and there was like a bank over here. The one out of business. But if you guys remember, in the 90s, I believe, this, these Romanian guys ripping off the Bank of America in Hollywood. And they had all this kevlar and bulletproof vests and gloves and helmets and everything and i think it's called 147 minutes or something like that 127 minutes 147 minutes something that not to be confused with the kid that fell in the rock that was a good movie too but um there was a pioneer chicken over there across the street the first building that i'm focused on in the center and uh that Pioneer Chicken went out of business in the 90s, and then it became a place called Taco Sobroso. They made really good tacos, apparently sell the tacos. But anyway, a movie studio came to town, and they shot that movie using this empty bank with the Romanian guys, and the scene where they were getting ready where it was shot over there in that Taco Sobroso. Now it's something else, a teriyaki place. But that movie was shot right here in this t in this city. The movie about the California, the Hollywood shootout, where they were just walking down the street with AK-47s and they're just to totally bulletproof. Um, that was shot at this empty Wells Fargo and Taco Sobroso. That over there, that fast auto, that used to be, that uh, was a blockbuster. I had a friend John used to be Santa Claus in front of that. There was a, also a flower store there he's Santa Claus there every Christmas and um, he only lives in my memory now he he passed away but there's La Harbor music back there my daughter took guitar lesson that La Harbor music used to be over there on Idaho and no Walnut and La Harbor Boulevard where that 99 cent store is that used to be La Harbor music then it moved down here has been down here ever since that that uh, pet store that reptile store it used to be on this wall, it used to be on that wall. It's been there forever. Some brothers had a video store. They doubled the rent, so they left. There's no more video stores left. Everything is changing. But spent a lot of a lot of time here. There's a school directly in the back. Pioneer chicken. 99 on Mondays. Two pieces of chicken and a biscuit. 99 and they football player 99 and Gil Jimenez if you're watching this we used to say that at work all the time for years I worked with Gil 20 years I worked with Gil I think uh, no C3 11 14 15 years I worked with Gil but I knew him a year I still know him since but we'd always just joke around that 99 99 there still is Pioneer Chicken way down Whittier Boulevard um past Lorena Keep going into East LA, there's a Pioneer Chicken. Unbelievable, Charlie showed me. And it still hasn't, the only thing changes the prices. Everything else, the menu, the pictures, the the uh, punch things, the, uh, our chata, it's all the same. 
Piner chicken. And there's another one supposedly in Downey. Frank told me, but I've never seen it.